Let's sing this together. Nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. Nothing is impossible when you're trusting in His Word. Hearken to the voice of God to thee. Is there anything to These songs that you sing here at the Millennial Church, the Great Millennial Church, these worship choruses, I mean, some songs will move you deeper and wider more than other songs. It's really good after you hear something, after you're singing something, it's good to just affirm it. When somebody sends me a card, like any kind of pastor appreciation or birthday or whatever, I don't want Hallmark to talk to me. I like when somebody does their own handwriting. Yes. Yes. I see what Hallmark said, then I see what this person says. That's good. And they say, Pastor Billy or Billy Burke or whatever, and they put that handwriting speaks to me. That's it. Same way the Holy Spirit. Yes. You're following a song leader and you're worshiping. You're doing an amazing job. But at the end of the, some of these songs, Lord, I really do mean that. Yes. Holy Spirit, yes. I really do need you. That, that worship is a, such a connecting into the supernatural. Yes. How many believe that tonight? Come on. Yes. Come on, hands up all over the place tonight. Nothing is impossible. Oh, if there's anything you should be just chanting, confessing, declaring every day and all day. Because the devil is a full-time liar. Come on, somebody. He's a full-time covenant breaker. He's a full-time deceiver. And I'll tell you what, sometimes you have to sing more just to keep yourself in the faith. Just to keep yourself expecting the promise. Yes, yes. Just to keep yourself yielding to the grace that God has for you tonight. Come on, hands up. Say these words. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. there's nobody like you. You know me more than you, anybody. More than my parents more than my spouse more than my friends you know me and you're living in me you know exactly what I need tonight you know the path that I'm on and all the preparation that I need I'm asking you tonight to shine your ever loving light on me turn on my switch flip it tonight that I may feel the power and see the glory and move at another level. I declare this weekend, my stone is rolled away and I'm coming out. I'm gonna live large in front of everybody. In the name of Jesus, I am healed. Come on, give God a big shout tonight. A soul set free, miraculous, miraculous, a change, the change in one redeemed my Calvary. I've seen that lily. I've, I've seen, seen the lily in Russia's way. Up through the stubborn song. the stubborn song. When I believe, I, I
amazing. You know, the miracle for so long, the church has defined the healing as gradual and the miracle as instant. Not true. A miracle is something that defies logic. It goes beyond reasoning. Whether it takes a minute, a second, a day, or five years. Doesn't matter the time span. It's the fact that it's not supposed to happen. It's not supposed to take place. And boy, if you can just grab a hold of that tonight. I mean, this diabetes, diabetic girl that was here, that's, that's supposed to be your have that forever. That's supposed to be you treat that. And there's some things they say can't be reversed. So the word can't, you know, and the word terminal and the word irreparable, those words are not in the scripture. They're in Webster's Dictionary. Come on, see, I don't live by Webster's. I live by the living, written word of God. Come on, give God a praise for that. I mean, give him a mighty shout. I think David, I'm going to share a little bit down here, then we're just going to worship a little more, okay? I want to pray for some people tonight. We had some great miracles last night. You may be seated. How many people here last night, how many people here got touched last night? You were in this service, somebody had to get touched. Come on, stand to your feet if God touched you in an amazing way last night. Stand up quickly. Oh my. Oh my. down I want this church come on all of you come down I want to hear from most of you come on right down here God touched you last night and then I'm going to talk about tonight tomorrow morning tomorrow night we might have to go Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday who knows we might have to just take a healing day I don't know you're the pastor come on yes, sir. pastor come on over and speak for your people amen what happened last night last night amen it was miracles 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 amen Amen. Brother Carl, where's, where's Carl at? Right here. He came in with a walker. Look at him, look at him now. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This lady right here, amen. She had, amen, amen. She would have asthma attacks, amen. Not asthma, but breathing problems, amen. But she's able to breathe. She said she can breathe fine. Come here now. She's breathing, amen. You're, he's talking about you, right? I'm talking about Tony. Is amen. that true? Yes, sir. You, you couldn't breathe what? What's that? I had COPD, and that's working with the lungs. The, with that's, the that's fluid, yeah, that's yes. fluid. Yes, and on the way coming here, my heart was tightening up. But you know what? I came expecting God to move and he touched me last night. I can breathe. Woo! Glory to God. See, and what people don't understand is you say, well, I'll testify when I, when I get all of it. No. No. You testify while you're in process. Because what you're saying is, God, I give you the praise for this 20%. And God says, oh, you're thankful. Here's some more. Oh, you're thankful. Here's some more. See, God always gives you some anointing to see how you handle it. Some favor. Some blessing. Because God don't like to be neglected. He don't like to heal you, then the doctor gets all the credit. You don't mind if the doctor's in the equation. You don't mind that. You give men honor, you give God glory. Give the doctor credit. Give the God doctor honor. Same with the nutritionist. Same with the preacher. Come on, you got to give the preacher a little bit of honor. Come on, somebody say amen. But, but the glory, because only he can heal. Doctors can cut, and they can stitch, and they can prescribe. They can operate. They can't heal the human body. They can't even heal a cut. They can stitch it. But that fearfully and wonderfully made creation has to, the healing process. If you go to bed between 10 o'clock and 12 o'clock, you get healing hormones. 
Your body will rejuvenate just by being in bed around 10 o'clock. He's made this body of ours to be really more supernatural than we could ever imagine. But when we do this and we give, look at this, this is amazing what happened to you. You could hardly walk last night. Are you happy yet? Are you close to happy? Or? <laughs> happy 10 miles away. Happy 5 miles away. But let's let some of these that you're seeing settle the issue with you. Every miracle ought to be a graveyard for what you didn't believe. When they came through the Red Sea, they got through it. And what was floating on top of the water was chariots. Egyptian soldiers it was a graveyard Moses closed the sea that miracle became a graveyard for thousands of people so every miracle I'd have it ought to settle the issue for you so you can travel through life knowing you got backup you may not have a grandmother like I did or you may not have a full family you may not have a believing husband you may not yet be connected to a great church you may be traveling very much alone, but boy, when you believe in what you're seeing here, we're trying to do it as slow motion as we can so you can believe. I mean, bigger crowds, you have to move a lot faster because time goes. So I'm assessing the crowd size. I'm trying to move a little slower so you can dial into this and believe that your candida can be healed. Your high blood pressure can be healed forever. But I can't come back there and get you stirred up about blood pressure. You've got to begin to apply faith and the anointing to you. Once the anointing's in the room, and last night it was here, I don't even like to leave. I've been known to stay a long time in meetings just because you get addicted to that presence. And so we, we realize this is a big weekend and we have tomorrow morning, say tomorrow morning, tomorrow night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. No, 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 but I'm saying, listen to me. So while you're here, learn how to apply the anointing. Most don't just sit here and go, yeah, touch me, touch me. He said to Bartimaeus, what can I do for you? Bartimaeus says that I may see. Well, Jesus knew that he was blind. How many think Jesus had a little bit of discernment? Come on, how many think? He knew he was blind. He knew he was poor. He knew he was probably homeless. He knew a lot of things. But he wanted to hear that come up out of him. He wants you to begin to get in touch with your need. He sees you tell other people, boy, I'll tell you what, I'm having so much trouble with this and with that. Or you tell yourself the secret things you're struggling with. I've got to stop this. I've got to quit this. Well, telling yourself you can't deliver you. You can't deliver you. You keep talking to you and you're going to find out you can't help you. It's good that you're acknowledging that, but you've got to just say, Lord, I really, I need delivered right here. What do you mean you need delivered? I'm out of control. I can no longer stop this or whatever activity you're doing. I can't stop thinking that. That thought is forever with me. The temptation to do this is forever with me. You know, and you just got to say, you know, I need some grace to deal with that or I need deliverance. But I don't want to go on a whole nother year. I don't want to be here at Christmas time next year saying, you know, oh, come on, you're faithful. Come on, somebody. I want to be celebrating next year. My big present is 2022 is the year I got set free. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is the year. Come on, Dave. This is the year that I got set free. Lighten your load. I mean, you can't be carrying everything you're still carrying. You don't like your car that much. You're still in debt with credit card. You know, your back hurts and you got some medication issues. You got to get something off that list. You just can't be chipping away at that. It'll take the strength right out of you. And, and just see whatever God's focusing on. Zoom in on what he's zooming in on. And I just say, man, I tell you what, I have this weight problem. Well, when have you talked to him about it? When have you laid that on the altar? When have you said to the Holy Spirit, show me what foods to lay on the altar? Yeah, that's good. 
I'll lay this on the altar just for a month. I'm going to put this on the altar. And if you can't put it on the altar, then why can't you? See, a lot of your can'ts or won'ts. Jesus can not help a won't person, but he can help a can't person. Come on, say, he'll empower the can't. But he can't invade the will of a won't. You know, we got to really, there, there can be so much happen right here tonight in the little bit of time that we're here. But this blood pressure thing, some of these silent killers, this, this stress thing that just continues to wreak havoc on you every day, worried about this and worried about that. You can be delivered of that. So Giving care to the wrong thing. Giving care to the wrong thing. Man, you live in a great city, you go to a great church, you're on a great path of recovery. I mean, right now, you're making the devil really nervous by the behavior. He's ready to take time to all tonight. Come on, somebody help me here. Yeah. You think he's been bothering you. You're bothering him because you're moving into the light. As long as you keep going, as long as you're moving in the right direction. Come on, I'm moving in the right direction. Grace is ahead of you. Grace is ahead of you. Elijah outran the finest Arabian horses for 20 miles. He outran the finest Arabian horses to get the whole way to the city where he was supposed to go that night. God wants you to get ahead of this. Ahead of virus, ahead of pandemic. Come on, ahead of vaccine, ahead of masking. He just wants you to get so far ahead of this where it's not a worry or a bothersome idea to you. It's not worth conversing to people with about it. Man, just say, have Holy Ghost, we'll travel. Yes. Come on, put your hands in the mud. Say, tonight's the night. I got to get rid of something here. I got to quit carrying this heavy load. Gil deliver me tonight. Holy Spirit, deliver me tonight. That I may know you in a greater glory. In Jesus' name, give him a mighty, mighty praise. Come on. Come on. So th these, all of these are your people in your church. And this, she was healed of COPD. Is that right? Yes, sir. Now, when that gets bad enough, that you have to go to the doctor and they have to drain you. Have you been drained yet? <laughs> Me. Have they? Not yet? By, I, I, by God, I've been healed by God. I know that, but you haven't had to get the draining yet. You haven't had to do that before you did? Okay. Then you got healed before you got that bad. That's right. I said you got that power of the Holy Ghost in that woman. What happened to you? What happened to you? But I came up because my back was hurting, my neck. I had been going back and forth to the doctor. I had a heart doctor. I have a GI doctor. They even sent me up with the vein doctor because the blood wasn't flowing right in my body. And they set me up with all these. I went to the chiropractor before I came and he cracked my back and did my neck. <laughs> I mean, all this was happening to me. And when we got on the van to come, I couldn't sit right. I had a pillow behind me, a pillow in front of me. Really? I was just hurting everywhere. And I said, you know, I'm going to get my healing. I just believe God. I bought my husband with me. He's Where's he sitting, at now? He's right. still sitting back there. But, you know, I just believe God. He said, oh, you hurt. And the Spirit of the Lord hit me. And as I was falling, the devil began to try to talk to me. No, you can't. You're going to hit the floor. You're going to hurt yourself. I said, the devil is a liar. Uh-uh. And when I fell back, I didn't feel nothing. And I'm like, okay. I know it was God because I could feel all this begin to leave. And I've been moving. Oh my God, I've been moving. 
cuts off, uh, I said, Lord, you're going to heal that. And, you know, I just believe God for that. Yes. All this, stomach issues, all this, it's got to go. See, because see what I shows up that nobody talks about, once you get a touch, yeah. once you get a touch, until all of a sudden this meek and mild person that has suffering and, Pastor Billy, I need you and give me your prayer, once you get that touch from heaven, yeah. you turn into somebody else. I mean, she's bossing, she's knocking the devil all over the place right here. It's possible for you to be the head, not the tail. Come on, it's possible. What's that mean, head, not the tail? You're in charge. You're back in the driver's seat. You know, you're back in control of what's happening in your life. You're not being dictated to any longer by your emotions. You know, what's the past is the past. Come on, say, that was then, but this is now. And you just begin to say that that was then and this is now that person I was they died a new person lives you've got to really begin how to answer those voices that are coming after you you can't just ignore them I'm so happy for you As you came on the van you're riding back a different woman it's part of the Holy Ghost Come on, somebody give God a shout. Mama, right here. Mama, mama. What happened to you last night? I was blessed. But I'm, you're not through with me yet. I had cataract surgery before I came. My right eye is perfect. But my left eye, I'm still going back and forth about it. My left side, even my foot, is swollen. Uh -huh. I don't know what's going on. But I, I'm looking for the complete deliverance on tonight. I came here from Kansas City, not just coming, but I'm looking for a change in my body. You came expecting? Yes. I'm here, and I'm ready. Oh, y'all. Oh. Amazing. Hallelujah. Pastor, you've done a great job with all these people. I see the preparation in your people. That comes from you. You just didn't get a van and put them in the van. They came here expecting. That's the secret to the breakthrough. Amazing. Holy Spirit, touch this woman, I pray. And, and take this eye and open it. Just open these eyes. The rods and the cones, may they be balanced. The rods and the cones. By that part, all of them. Oh my God, thank you. There goes, ma'am. There goes the Holy Ghost. Oh, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Open up, ma'am. Open up, dear Lord Jesus. Not quite. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Ha ha. Thank you, Jesus. Oh my God, I thank you. When I cover my right eye, those numbers back there is blurred. Uh-huh. When I cover my left eye, I see clear. Okay, cover your right eye again. How do we inherit the promises? Faith and patience. Yeah. Let's believe that tonight, okay? We'll be checking with you all through the evening, but I want you to begin to do that. Look at that all through the night because your faith is still very much alive. Mm. And what are you doing, my... You're just walking around like a normal guy. That's what I'm doing. I you're what? I'm just walking around. He's what now? Just walking around. Just walking around. 
just walking around. If you were here last night, he wasn't just walking around. Yeah, God working. He walking with me. Yeah. See, we all fall down. He put me wet back up. That's good. I'll fall down. Check get back up. That's so cool. I get back up and I just move for him walking. Beautiful. See, I go with all the And when I was saying I would talk too much, that means you can't tell me what good about God. That I keep on stop talking about God. You can't. Can't do that. Can't stop talking about no, Jesus. Yes, I know. You can't, can't, I can't talk and uh, say I'm not going to talk about Jesus. Because Jesus the Son, you can't go by Him, by my God, the Father. God, go to Jesus and God. Because the Son is Jesus, God is the Father. Do that, that bad. I just God know I love you. That's all that Jesus. I know. I just love you. You say Jesus, you move. Don't be preaching to me now. Don't start preaching. <laughs> he's ready to. He's ready to go. Precious. Who? Quick testimony. Quick. What happened last night? My neck was healed from what? my chair. Really? Yes. You were sitting in the chair. And didn't even healed. come up. Didn't even come up. I it got love hot. it. It popped. And it popped. Was what was wrong with your neck? I was in a car wreck 26 years ago. 26 years ago. Mm -hmm. You so, prayed for it the last time you were here. Uh huh. But it manifested last but night. But it manifested last night. I love that. Come on, say she got prayer. But the manifestation, manifestation. came when God wanted it to. That's why you can't give up. The Bible don't say now healing is. It says now faith is. I'm going to say that again. The Bible don't say now healing is. It says now faith is. So you always release your faith now. You always believe tonight's the night. The next prayer, the next touch, the next time you, you're in the worship service. You shouldn't leave this building, this any service, without saying, okay, Lord, go through me and fix that lung. Fix my attitude. Deliver me from this. Use every ounce of the presence you're... Because that's the freebie. Amen. That's somebody else setting the table for you. That's not you confessing and you singing and you... That's you just sitting in a meeting. You're sitting in your Sunday morning, like tomorrow morning. Any service you're in. It's more than just a good message. When that message hits you, it's like, boy, I received that right on my ears. With that growth behind my neck. It don't have to be a healing service to get healed. That's right. Thank you, Lord. It don't have to be a deliverance service to get delivered. That's it. But you have to apply it. That's it. You have to believe it. That's for me. Lord, I receive that right now. Mm, I receive it. And the more you receive, the more that what? The, the, the acceleration of the manifestation. But quit looking for somebody to always pick you up and encourage you. Start to encourage yourself. I heard that. I saw that. God's on my side. If you can talk yourself into depression, you can talk yourself into happy. Come on, somebody. That's right. Come on. And that's how you get to depression. Usually you think your way there. The danger about thoughts is thoughts turn into a voice. A thought told a man to go on a train in New York and throw a smoke bomb and then start shooting people he was responding to a voice but that voice was once a thought the talking snake still talks and he's telling you to do things that are forbidden that are outside the boundaries of where God's grace is you know these, these voices are very very real and you must answer them back you don't have to get into a dialogue with them Eve was told to talk to the snake, not with the snake. But she, they decided to get engaged with the wrong voice. So when you started getting engaged with the wrong voice, I don't know why I'm depressed. I can't figure this out. There's nothing to figure out. There's nothing to figure out. Just begin to release faith on it. That's the perfect time to sing your favorite song.
whatever that song is. That's the perfect time to begin to say, I believe in Jesus. That's the perfect time to say, I've been forgiven of all of my sins. By his stripes, I am healed. Last time I checked, when Jesus started quoting the scripture, the devil just packed up his bag and left. Jesus never had to tell him to leave. The Bible says, and the devil departed. He couldn't take any more. You start singing, and you start saying, and you start sowing, he'll just leave you. He can't handle a full, full-time believer. He can't handle it. Too much light, too much power. Come on, say, I got to go full-time. Come on, say it. I gotta... So that's amazing. How many years? That was a couple years ago. 26. And that, but the accident, the accident was 26. So you must have been in a pretty serious accident. I flipped my vehicle. You flipped the vehicle. And you've been to the chiropractor, I'll bet. How many times have you been to the chiropractor? A million. A million. <laughs> <laughs> and you left healed. Yes. Who'd you tell? Anybody? Yes. Who? Friends. And Friends. Family. And now everyone. And you're free. Yes. You have a home church? Here. Right here. Right here. Paul, we got another one right here. That power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Oh. Yes, ma'am. What happened to you last night? I was having a, a spiritual stuckness. A spiritual what? Stuckness. I was stuck. It was like a every time I would stuckness. try to lean into the Lord, it was like I was hitting a glass wall and I couldn't get there. So... I came, I came down a couple of times because I just couldn't get past that stuckness. And then at the end of the night... A group, I couldn't get past that roadblock. Right. And then at the end of the night, a group prayed over me and prayed with me. And we had a miracle break, breakthrough. Hallelujah. Wow. Now, what do you got to do? Now you got to keep feeding it. What you feed grows, what you starve dies. And sometimes you're feeding your soul way more than you're feeding your spirit. You start getting to a lot of movies and a lot of this and a lot of that, and and you're starving yourself from the written word. That written word isn't something that's replaced by the prophetic word. The Bible says, I have a more more sure word of prophecy. It's what's written. If you can't believe what you see, how are you going to believe what you don't see? Believe what you see. Read that. I believe that. Read that. I believe that. Just because you know it don't mean you believe it. Okay, I'm coming back here to say that. See, a lot of you think because you know these scriptures, you believe them. You're, you're in the process of believing them. Then if you believe them, then you have to act like you believe them. If you believe it's going to be cold outside today in Oklahoma, then prove that to yourself. You put on a sweater or a jacket or a vest or something because, what? because you believe that. But when you say you, you think you believe something because you know it, the Bible says when you give money to God, it's going to come back, what, 30, 60, 90, 100 fold. 100 fold is 10,000%. The bank's offering you what? What's, what's passport savings? What is it? It's sickening. Come on, say it's absolutely sickening. It's a curse. But the Bible says if you give this money to the work of God, then you get all the, you say, amen. Well, you know that, but you must not believe it because you don't do it on a regular basis. So if you miss church, your money should still come in. You should be mailing that tithe in. One reason, because you love the church you go to. You want to support the work of God in your city, but the next thing is what? You want to keep that seed in the ground. You don't want to be under an attack and not have seed in the ground. That seed in the ground really protects you from the devourer. But you know that, but yet we don't there's so many things we know, but we just must not believe it. If you don't anoint yourself with oil. Yeah, sleep with the prayer cloth. There's more you can do. Take communion every day. There's a lot you can do. That. So what I'm saying is, knowing it is wonderful, but believing it puts it at a whole nother level. Believing it enough to do it. Amen. Amen. Give God praise. Come on, it's powerful. Hey, 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 that is so powerful for you. Isn't that great? Do you, are you involved with the church here at all? Do you do anything? Children's ministry. Children's ministry. Ah. 
so you can tell them your story. Yes. Give her a big God bless you. That's powerful. <laughs> Amen. So what do you, what, now this is that you feel the, you feel the free flow. Is that what you're yes. saying? Yes. Yes. I can feel the river flowing again. Uh huh. Okay. So what do you think you're going to have to do to keep that river flowing? Well, I try to read my Bible every day and do praises every day and worship and I watch sermons every day and it got it was getting to where I couldn't open that Bible anymore I was kept finding excuses and every time I was trying to come on see I read them to hear them I read them to see them every time I read the Bible I hear them every time I read the Bible I see them here comes Jesus walking on the water I see it and he touched the leper and I see it oh I'm trying to help you Act happy because I'm trying to help you. Come on, I'm really trying to help you. I, when she said, I touched the hem of his garment, I see it. I hear it and I see it. You begin to, your five senses begin to be subdued. You begin to be taken into another dimension. Just like a scary movie can pick up a spirit of fear. Just like a bad, dirty movie can give you a spirit of lust. Pictures create lust. If pictures create wrong desires that take you into wrong actions, there's the answer right there. Then the opposite of that is also true. Yes. You can get so close to God tonight, it'd scare you. Come on, you'd have to go raise your grandmother from the dead and say, ma'am, you were right. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody, help me here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this lady in Michigan, she got so healed. I mean, she didn't believe in me. She didn't believe in the meeting and all that stuff. And she came up and she says, well, you know, somebody told me that God uses you. And I said, ma'am, it's just him. It's all him. And she, she, had, uh, she couldn't hear right and she had lumps and all that stuff. And I just touched her gently. She came up from the power and, and she felt, she said, she screamed this in front of like 2,000 people. Here's what she said. This is no BS. Only she didn't say, she didn't say BS. Now, the pastor's sitting right over here, and I looked over at the pastor. He went, oh, my God. He went like that. Not that we're not familiar with those words, but the natural reaction from her, the shock that God was about to prove her wrong. God's about to prove us all wrong. That's how we got to get on the road to right is admitting we're wrong. Come on, say this out loud. God helps humble people. Say it. Be humble with God. Walk softly with the Holy God. Act soft with Him. I mean, walk soft. Act like He really knows what He's talking about. Whenever He says He's not finished, it's not too late. You haven't done anything that bad. You know, you got to really... You know, the, the Samaritan woman who was a different color said to Jesus, how is it that you being a Jew talk to me being a Samaritan? He said, let's just talk about water. Come on, you want, you're thirsty. He just changed the subject. He refused to get into racial discussion. He kept it on the main thing. Come on, keep it on the main thing. Keep it, come on, say the main thing. Keep it on the main thing because the devil's, a, he's a delusion. He, he's an optical, he does things to get you off Focus to distract you. This is an hour you can't afford to be distracted. You've got to know where you are, who you are, what God's doing in you. If somebody says, what's the Holy Spirit doing in you? You've got to be able to have an end. You can't say, well, I, 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 I don't know. They say, you go to church every week. You're in Bible study. You're reading your Bible. And you don't know what God's doing in you. Sinners know what's happening in them. They'll tell you. I went here last night and I did this two days ago and they're very aware of all of the deeds they do. We've got to be very aware of what God's doing. Man, he's changing me. He's making me a different person. He's really cut down on my temper and my, my indecision making. You know, I, I'm able to sleep all night. I'm back in church. You know, I've never read my Bible. I'm, I'm really starting to read my Bible. Not like I should, but I'm reading it more now than I ever have. You know, I mean, I'm forgiving more people. Whatever. There's got to be something in you that's taking place. 
It's just amazing. And I'm happy for you because if, that blo if that's broken open, I'm expecting a flow like you've never imagined. Well, I've been working very hard the last few years to become a warrior for Christ. Become a warrior. And then when I hit that wall, it was like... I want you, to get, get, I want you to get out of being a warrior and become a worshiper. I want you to get out of warring and fighting and get over into worshiping. And the worship will fight for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Good work. I mean, if you get into warfare, if all you do is warfare, you're going to get, oh my God, Christianity is going to become a job. That's good. Get up in the morning, I fought the devil. Okay. In the afternoon, I bind and loosen. Okay. And I've been telling the devil and I'm getting and say, like, calm down, calm down. I didn't get saved to be fighting full time. I mean, I fight. Obviously, we all fight. We have the armor. We fight. But I worship. And I find when I come out of the when I come out of worship, no one wants to mess with me. The devil says, I don't want to mess with them right now. When that worship wears off, I don't want to mess with them. Because that worship is the thing he coveted the most. Come on, somebody give God a shout. And you go to a church that really breaks the level of worship. Your pastor here, his wife, they're worshipers. That's going to rub off on some of you. I hope all of you. That's so amazing. Worship. Full-time warrior. Sing worship songs. Leave those fighting songs for another day. Just, just worship how good he is, how great he is. And you'll watch healing happen, deliverance happen. It's going to be amazing. Oh, somebody give God a shout. Oh. What happened here, ma'am? What happened, ma'am? you back again. Yes. <laughs> what happened to you? I couldn't stand up. I couldn't sit down. I couldn't get up in the supper table without... <gasps> boosting myself up for somebody helping me up. Wow. And after that, I've been doing a lot of things. After last night. I couldn't even get down on a floor to dust. I could not get down. If I got down, I couldn't get up. Uh huh. And now you can. Yes, sir. I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I've seen a soul set free. Come on, miraculous. Miraculous. The change in one redeemed from Calvary. Come on, I've seen, I've seen the lid push its way up through the stubborn sun. Our precious lady from where are you from again? Tulsa. Tulsa. Okay, and then you have friends. Here I'm from the me. I'm the Baptist. Po oh, the Baptist. Pastel. <laughs> yeah, and she came in with the crutch, I believe, right? I did come in with the crutch. Okay. I've been on my feet all day long because I've had company, and I could walk pretty good, pretty good. I, I've stood here so still so long it's kind of hard now but i've seen progress in one day i'm i'm the prog the miracle that you said was in progress okay miracle in motion in motion come on say i'm a miracle, miracle in, motion. in motion and i'm claiming that every day to be so better tell them about your relatives tell them who was it my sister from wichita and my nephew from nashville came in today they had not seen me since i broke my leg and uh they were absolutely amazed <laughs> at how I was walking. That smile you have, that shine you have is something's going something's going on inside of you. God is so good. You know, I kind of seems like I've just kind of played the game for so long. Oh, ouch. But I knew there was more. And as I start digging deep in the Word, and as I started praying more and asking God to change my heart, things began to happen. 
And I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I can't even tell you. This other lady back here. I'm just so happy. I don't know what to say. You know, that a Baptist snuck into our meeting, <laughs> got the goods. Amazing. So really. You know, my husband died two years ago, and um, if anyone, and I know most of you have lost a loved one that you love so much, but. I didn't think I could make it. Wow. I have never had such peace in my life since he has passed. And it has to be God. Because there's no other reason. Wow. I've just been blessed. How many years were you married? Forty. Forty years. Children? Three. Three. One he them. is in your future. He's not just in your past. He's not a was. He's an is. Yes, he yeah. mm -hmm. You true. That's true. That's for all of you tonight. They're your loved ones that you love that know Jesus. They're in your future. Isn't that exciting? Isn't that exciting? This might be a touch of the Holy Ghost. That's the moonwalk fall right there. Yes, sir, what happened to you last night? Well, you called me out to come up. Yes. My, me and my wife. Uh huh. You know, she's Which right is there. the wife? Yeah, she's sitting right I there. I see her. Uh -huh. All right. Well, all day yesterday was praying in the Holy Ghost, and he told me, the Holy Ghost told me you were going to call me out yesterday. I got a bad report of cancer in my left lung. Oh. But I'm believing the good report. And you spoke the word over me. You said, God is scraping me. So and tell me any difference in, in this? Any when, when I went down the second time, I wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> but when I went down the second time, I just, I felt a sensation in that area. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord. Come on. Come on. You know, one of the neatest things I've learned, never read it, but just in a meeting, maybe, I don't know how long it's been, a year or so ago, but just in the middle of a service like this, don't know where I was, but the Holy Spirit whispered and he said these words, if every disease begins with a symptom, then every miracle can begin with the absence of a symptom. Isn't that amazing? I, I, I just was taken back by that, right? Because, I mean, I heard it here and here. Uh, no one had ever, I never read that. Or I thought, oh, Lord, what a piece of information. So taking it very, very serious when somebody says, I can breathe better. I see better. Well, I can move my arm. That's the beginning of a miraculous invasion. Come on. Of a Holy Ghost kind. I mean, it's just amazing. And I believe that for you. Make sure you call back to the church and well, give I, that report. I come here. I thank God for my pastor. By the Holy Spirit. Come on, ma'am. Who's next over here? Quickly, quickly, quickly. Yes. What happened to you last night? Okay, you called out COPD. COPD. Uh -huh. Four years ago, a doctor diagnosed me with COPD, and yeah. I rejected that. Oh. Okay? So, because I wasn't going to have any problem with my lungs. But uh -huh. two years ago, I sat in the wrong day chair or she sat me in the wrong chair and who did anyway, a dentist uh-huh okay dentist so she we were supposed to talk about what she was going to do instead she put the syringe in my mouth and she decided herself what to do and of course she was real rough young dentist no experience i aspirated a bunch of stuff in my lungs uh, not good stuff you know bloody mucus whatever and so i had a problem uh, it's been two years but before christmas that's, uh, I went to pulmonary specialist and she suggested having a bronchoscopy because I was coughing so much all the time. Right, right. So she did the bronchoscopy and 
But you tell people about the lungs being scraped. Yeah. Okay, she scraped my lungs. She irrigated my lungs. Okay, it actually was a pleasant experience because they put me to sleep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it was $31,000 the insurance paid. So that's what everybody should pay you when you say get your lungs scraped. <laughs> I like this lady a whole lot. You know what, man? Put your hands up. You've been deprived okay, of. Let's put, let me I got new lungs. Did you? Remember, I was up. I was waiting because you were talking to the other people, which was okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't mind waiting. Well, I didn't and mind I, waiting. I didn't mind waiting for my miracle. No. <laughs> I love you, Billy Burke. <laughs> anyway, so I came last night. And I said, okay, I had that yeah. procedure done. Yeah, yeah, I want yeah. new lungs yeah. so I can get back to doing what I used to do and more for the Lord, right? Uh -huh. What I used to do and more, greater things, even greater things, okay? So I was standing here, and the Holy Spirit, while you were ministering to other people, touched yeah. me, and I knew I got new lungs. And when you came up How do you me, know, someone looking at you may be wondering, how do you know you got new lungs? How do you know that? I saw two angels coming to me and delivering the lungs. Okay, you okay. heard that. I two did. Angels. I don't usually tell people about angels because they don't believe me. You saw or them. Or they don't want to hear. You actually saw them. I saw two angels coming with lungs. I saw it. And then when you came up to me, I told you I got new lungs. You said you did. So you confirmed it. I know, but you I saw the, the angels, though. I saw the angels. Yeah. They, they each came with a lung. Gave it to me. Somebody better give God a praise. <laughs> Now, you can sit back there and say, I don't know about this. Start believing. In these end times, there's going to be people see way more things than that. We know there's going to be angels flying around saying, don't take the mark. Don't take the mark. Hopefully, we'll be out of here by then. But maybe a few of you, the way you're acting, might still be here. I'll tell you that. <laughs> So if you see an angel flying around saying, don't take the mark, I mean, that's scripture. We're going to see amazing things. And we are. And, and I believe every word that she said. Yeah, yeah. yeah I do. But I believe that. Thank you. <laughs> I don't have to give you 31000 though, because, well, maybe I do. Because you're finishing the work. <laughs> Think about that. I'm liking this woman more by every second. You don't know me anything. I think I do because I don't know if I give it or not. I can't even receive money when she's offering it. <laughs> Listen to me, ma'am. I... You know what? I'm, I'm happy just to even see you more, come alive. Even more I'm happy just to see a different spirit overtake you. Because yes. you're different. You come to church here? Just, just become a, a better worshiper. Sing every song. Get in every meeting. Because God has plans for you. He's turned my morning into joy. That's you. That's you. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Yeah, quickly. How are you tonight? I'm great. I uh, walked in here last evening, and I, after um, being off and um, bedridden for two weeks after a car accident, and um, right out here, and I had a fractured sternum, and it was just two weeks of time I've never been a, had to walk through before. I mean, I've been healed of many things, but I couldn't, I'm by myself, and I couldn't get up, I couldn't get down, you know, I needed help, etc. and I just believed God to do a miracle while I was at home, and he did. But then I was like, I need to get here, and I will be here, and this is my home church, so I will be here when you come here. And so I got here, and um, I knew when I was seated where a few rows up, I knew that I'm, this is God. I'm, I'm going to go down in the river here. And I always say, wherever the river flows, yeah. there's life. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so you called on a few of us rows here to, you know, just yeah, come yeah, out, yeah. come out, come out. And then was you one of those? I was one, <gasps> but I, I, when I looked, I'm like, all these women are in the aisle, and I'm like, dear God, I can't even walk straight. And so I just like felt like I floated over them. And when I hit down here, I knew I jumped in the river. 
and I couldn't get up, and I kept trying to. You couldn't get up because on of the, the floor, you know. I mean, I, I mean, because I, of the the anointing. Thing. I was just yeah, but the Lord was just so strong on me, and I was the weight of it, of Him on me, and I was just trying to get up because I knew there was everything going on, and I was like, now wait, time out. So this lady sees angels. This lady comes down and gets on the floor and can't get up. <laughs> Listen to me. This is the great church. Just, just, where else could you go? <laughs> Hamburger, fries, and a Coke. Come on, somebody, where? Look at the menu here. You know what it means? It means the Holy Spirit feels very comfortable here. If you read your Bible, that Ephesians, I believe it's 3, 16, and 17, it's a, it looks real s sterile in the King James. You know, that Christ may live in you and dwell in you, and, and you may be rooted in the ground. That Christ may live in you and dwell in you. The, the correct Greek is that Christ may be at home in you. That he may relax in you and be able to show you things and move through you and change your personality and say, hey, you're a little too soft, you're a little too stern. Give him access to you because you don't want to live in the role of your ancestors. They were all nice people, but God's got a higher call for you. He's got a higher call for you to defend the huge to be like your dad or like your mother or like your brother. We all come into this to get mentored by the Holy Spirit. Come on, so that I may be conformed into his image. See, and that all comes by you letting Jesus have room in you. Don't be so, so mistrusting because of what people did to you. You have to know the difference between a healing hand and a hurting hand. God only wants to make you whole. He's not going to redo, reopen. No, no, no. This is wonderful. What a great story. I got all new parts. You I got what? All new parts from head to toe. What do you mean and by I, that? I just knew there was life to every part of my body that just came into place and what whatever was missing, just, just the little parts just came together. So another and, thing, just when I was calling those people out, I knew that there's people thinking, ah, that's just for show or that's just to get a bunch of people. On. No, no, no. And here's the story for this lady. She was one of those people that came out and look what... See, because not everybody that comes up here believes. Faith, faith can be perceived. Faith can be felt. I can perceive faith. But God may have you just sit here and worship here and commit to the process. And all of a sudden, something just shows up in you. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Come on, put your hands up. Say, I'm becoming a seeker. Come on. Come on, I'm going to be a full-time seeker. I got to know him. I got to know what he has for me. I'm a hungry person. I'm a dangerous believer. Come on, give God a shout. That's the way that is. It's a mighty touch of a... Whoa! Woo. I think I'm over here. Yes, ma'am, what happened? I've, I've had chronic mental illness since I was like 17. Mental and, illness? Yes, yes. Yes, and uh, addictions as well. And uh, it was about a year ago you were here. Uh -huh. And I don't know if you remember, but there was a, a girl that was anorexic. Okay. And, and you touched her and she got immediately, and, and all this demonic stuff came off me at that time. Off and of I, you? Yes. Wait yes, a minute. I just in my place, in my seat. And I just wait a minute, to... wait a minute. Go stop talking. Don't. I can't help it. I'm just so excited sometimes. So, so I'm praying for another lady, an anorexic lady, and demons came out of her. But over there, you're sitting. That's and, right. And something That's came right. out of you. And that began, that began a process of walking with the Lord every morning and doing the work I need to do because there's inner Come work. Come on, she got a job. Come on. And I still have oppression from time to time, but I want to tell you right now, last, this morning I woke up with such peace and I was with the Lord all day, just basking in his presence and reading the word and declaring the word over me because I am going to see complete healing. Yeah. Nothing missing, nothing missing, nothing broken. Nothing In Jesus' name, all to his glory, all to his glory. Come on, come on. Your name is higher, I tell you, that's amazing. 
they say about these chronic mental, they'll never be healed, nothing. Nothing can do, you're on medication your whole life and that's the end of it. Now I'm not telling anybody to go off medication, I would not do that. I would have to do it gradually by the leading of the Holy Spirit and a good doctor. I'm not, I'm not you know, but he is gonna do all the work. He's doing inner transformation, rearranging my thought life, rearranging my brain. He, Come on, come on. You know, now that she's like, kind of opened the door for this, a lot of times when you come here for one thing and you get up off that floor and you don't see that you got what you came for, what he may have given you instead, he may have given you back strength. He may have given you back the fire to go fight that. You know, to go really deal with that. See, there's a lot of things that until you take charge, because he doesn't want you to be dependent on anybody the rest of your life. To get the fight back, to get the thrill back, the hunt, to get to say, you know what, I'm going to contend for the miraculous. I'm going to contend for it. I'm not some dead fish floating downstream. And that's what she got. That's what I see in her. But I got to tell you, sir, I am planted in the best church in the universe right here. And I don't care how many times I go up for prayer. I go up for prayer almost single time. I slay in the spirit every single Sunday. But it doesn't matter because he's been doing this miraculous, transformative work in me. That is permanent, permanent transformation. Not just okay for a while. Do high. No, no, no. Permanent stability, strategy, and sustainability. Your name. Your name is on. I know, I know, but I choose life today. I choose life, and I choose his peace, and I choose victory. Amen. Someone I'm asked just so me, grateful. Some, someone asked me, they said, what do you do when you can't believe? I said, you choose to believe. Amen. You choose. Why? Because grace follows a decision. You choose, you get empowered to do the right thing. But until you say yes or no, as long as you remain in that gray area, remember sharks swim in murky water. That's where most of their prey gets attacked is in the murky water. Get out of that murky water. Choose, choose, that's amazing. Holy Spirit, touch her, touch her by your mighty. Oh, you let me just come close and I go. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, you have the anointed, I have it too. And it, then it, we just, I fall. <laughs> Come on, somebody get out of town. She's really sensitive, sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Which where we all got to get. We need that. Just sit there a little bit. I want you to think, just sit there and back. No, sit there just for a few minutes because 
All that you said was really worth soaking in. I did the, um, the, the soul searching, your video was on, 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 uh, Soul ties? These, no, no, um. Soul cleanse? Yes, so soul cleanse. I listen to them all the time. And, and I, I have people now that I can vent with and get the stuff out so that the work is permanent. Wow. Because if you don't do the work, there's, hey, there's work, there's footwork that we have to do. You don't just get a miracle and then two days later you're fine. You have to do the footwork and you gotta do the, it's not easy, but it's worth it. We have a whole table out there of soul cleanse. And starting tonight, they're $1,000 a piece. <laughs> For tonight only. Oh my. You do. This pastor does such a great job. He does. You do. You do. And his wife, Karen, I mean, they, and, and, and I say this, the people around them, these, these precious armor bearers and workers, so loyal. No one can do this alone. Even Jesus needed a dedicated team. No one, I can't, no one can do this alone. So anytime you see a, a good work like this, a great work that's growing and growing, and I know they're talking to architects now how to make things better and bigger. Because, you know, you're, you're, walls got to come down. Balconies got to go in. I don't know when, how, and where, and parking lots got to change. You're, you're on the ground floor of a global ministry. Do you understand that? You may be located here, but you may have a church over there, one planted over there, one down the road, one in Miami, one in Puerto Rico. Who knows? This is not the way this is going to remain. But here's the thing, it's going to be quick. It's not going to be years in the evolving, years. No, 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 no. This Sunday, tomorrow morning, if you don't come on time, you could lose your seat. And if these miracles continue here like they are, they're going to come from all over the world. Just to get a prayer, just to get healing. Aren't you glad that you're in this place tonight? Come on, in this place. What happened to you, ma'am? I'm the one that had the niece that's been sick for 51 years. Yes. And I was carrying the burden. And last night when you prayed for me and everything, the burden just lifted and came off of me. And I don't have to carry that no more. I can walk by faith and pray and trust God that he's going to totally heal her and set her free. And her whole family is going to be saved in Jesus' name. I'm probably not the only one that's been doing it, but sometimes you feel like you're the only, the only one that's carrying the burden. And it's not yours to carry. Jesus wants to carry it for you. So if you're carrying one tonight, get rid of it. Give well, we it got to so Jesus. many preachers up here tonight. <laughs> Everybody's a preacher tonight. I'm tired of being upset and unhappy with all the craziness in my family. I'm ready to give it all to the Lord so I can do what God has called me to do instead of what the devil wants me to do. He wants to keep me defeated, but not no more. I'm a free woman, and I thank you. Come on, somebody. And I thank God for Come it. Come on. Come on. You can tell when the anointing gets on the inside, gets stirred up, touches you. It's just different. And it can happen to you tonight. We'll have a moment of ministry tonight, but I just want you to get, the, the healing anointing is here. It's ready to just sweep into this room, but often it comes and knocks on your door and people don't answer. And they peek into the hole and they go, no, nah, not tonight, not tonight. You, you can't pick the place or the time, you can't. If he's Lord of the healing, he's Lord of where? He's Lord of how? He's Lord of all of that.
He knows right when to walk through your wall and say, touch me. He knows when to do that. I mean, we really supposedly to be are, are to be really full-time surrender. Everything on the altar. Lord, whatever, whatever. Same with your recovery. Quit getting mad at God. Quit getting mad at preachers. Quit getting mad at me if you're mad at me. Stop it. Because <laughs> God likes me a whole lot. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. I am too. Because <laughs> you... <laughs> going to be good from now on. Yeah. It's going to be good from now on. Come on, give God a shout. Come on, give him a mighty praise. Yes, what happened to you? Sir, I was the gentleman that uh, had a bad hip. Yes. I was on crutches. It's, yes. I was running in place there, sir. Running in place. And um, I, short story, long yesterday, the devil, uh, I started hearing this noise in my car. I ran into the, drove into my uh, dealership. I hate to tell you this, but your, uh, your transmission's blown. I said, bless God, no devil's gonna stop me from coming to this meeting tonight. This was yesterday. So I got an Uber driver, got here yesterday. And, you got uh, a what? An Uber, Uber. To church? To church, yes. And so, <laughs> and so, <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> I just, uh, I'm happy to be here. I'm, I'm, I believe in God for full manifestation. It's, it hasn't. How much? How much has manifested? It's probably about fifty percent. Fifty percent. Yes. Yes. I don't have any more crutches. Um, I used to be an athlete. I've used my body growing up, but uh, you know, God forgives and restores that. So, I've had the power of God come over me, and I know God is wanting to give me totally, hundred percent healed. And so, so tell me what's going on. What What was wrong before last night? Then tell me about the fifty percent. Okay. <clears throat> well, I can I can move my legs a little better. I can, uh, <clears throat> I have, can't run yet, but uh, I can, uh, I don't have to have crutches. I can walk and um, I'm just trusting the Lord for 100% total restoration. So you needed, you needed crutches yes, when, last it, night? Yes, I, I gave them back to the person. I said, I don't need them anymore. So I'm just, by standing in faith, I'm not leaving here until I get my full manifestation. And where are you from? Where do you live? I live here in Tulsa. Yes, sir. This is your home church? Well, I might be coming visit here a lot more. <laughs> this is... Yesterday was my first time here, so... Your first time? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Your first time when the crutches... Go Think what happens if the yeah. second time you come. That's right. That's right. I'll be running around this place. Uh, well, I'm thankful. I, I, I really honor you and your ministry and the pastor and his wife and this beautiful, obviously, uh, team of, of ministers here. I, it's a great team. It's a tremendous place. And I, uh, I just want more of Jesus. I want to be filled with Jesus, overflow with Jesus. That's what I want. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb yes. and not loving our life unto death. Living, living, not, you know, not just always in fear. If you remove fear from your life, you'll do way more stuff. Your life will become exciting if you get rid of that fear. You hear me tonight? So what do we want to do here? You, is this uh, still hurting or it what? It still hurts a little bit. Yes, a little bit. Yes, sir. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We give you praise, Holy Spirit. We thank you. We thank you. Redeemed through Calvary, I've seen that lily push away up through the stubborn song. Oh, I really do. I Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear, all fear is gone. Because I know.
too long. I'm going to get him up and start running. Come on, man. What is this? What is this? Let's go, sir. Come on. Let's get up. Come on, sir. Come on. Go, go, go. Let's get moving. Come on. Let's go. Oh. Hey, come on, sir. <laughs> the anointing still has him. Leave, leave it. Just take off. Just go. Just go. Just go. Just go. 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 straighter, my God. <laughs> Just love it. Very back there shaking his hand. Ma'am, what's going on with you? Um, so last night, yes. like, so when I came, I had given up hope in some areas. You did? I had. <laughs> I mean, but I was still, like, trying. Of course. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I had been dealing with some stuff in my body for a long time. Like, it was getting worse, you know? And, um, like, really, like, pain and numbness. And sometimes I'd be so tired, I couldn't hardly go. But anyway, last night during the service, it was like his love. Do you know what I mean? It was like... Um, <laughs> His love, you know, was so in this place. And thank you for letting him move and just like his kindness, you know, his patience. It was palpable to me. And I believe this, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that his love just consumes. <laughs> we'll get it. The power's on it. The power's on it. Power's on it. Power's on it. Power's on it. Man, let it go. Let it go. My God. Somebody give God a shout! Come on! Oh. I think she scared herself. That's what I think about that. Bring her, bring her to me, bring her to me. Look at.
Do you come to church here? Where do you go to church? What? <laughs> Someday, what'd she say? I may be changed. <laughs> know there's churches today don't even have altar calls anymore there's churches that used to there's churches that used to really believe in the, the full baptism of the Holy Spirit we don't hear about that anymore if we've ever needed the power if you've ever needed the power it's right now Don't sit down yet. This is just, you know. This is just something. Something is, again, so very real, very tangible tonight. Yes. Do you notice how slow I'm moving? You see why I'm moving? Just This is on purpose. Again, normally, I mean, we move a lot quicker, but God wants you to salivate. He wants you to swish this around in your spiritual mouth tonight. Ask yourself, why are you remaining where you are? What's keeping you? What's holding you back? What's the chain and the ball in your life? What has become bigger than Jesus to you? Because if something's dominating your mind and, and it's not him, if something has become bigger than him. And what's bigger than him? You gotta get rid of that JC Penny Jesus. Get rid of that Jesus you picked up at the flea market. Get the one that's found in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Find the one that says, let me and give me some space and watch me work. It's hard, it's, hard, it's hard to work with anybody that isn't fully surrendered, though. And maybe, maybe God don't have the freedom in you tonight to really... I mean, that has, requires some freedom over there. Well, that doesn't have to be you. Nobody says you have to do that. That doesn't. That might not mean what surrender looks like for you, but it's got to be better than what it is. Maybe you've been bottlenecked by family, bottlenecked by a husband, a wife, a, a particular career. There's a lot of people who just don't want to be perceived as spiritual because they're so professional. Those are people that usually I meet out in the car, in the, in the parking lot, or in back of a studio. When Amy Simple McPherson preached in California, in Los Angeles, the movie stars would line up in the alleyway. I could name them here by name, you'd know them. And they would wait for her to come out and she'd go down through the alley touching A-list celebrities because they didn't want to be seen in the meetings. They didn't want to be seen as having a need What's wrong with having a need? I mean, need is good. Needy is bad. Being needy means you're just empty. You're broken. He can fix that too if you're always needy. Needy is a spirit. But to be in need is, that's who we are. I need him. I need him more today than yesterday. I need a fresh download. I need fresh oil. I need to be around some good people like the, the Brady's here. Yes. And I think and it's just we didn't have need. That's who we are. We needed a Savior. You can't get to heaven on your own. Sometimes you can't get connected to a healer on your own. One guy came up to me. He said, I don't need you to pray for me. I said, great. I, I have a lot of people to pray for. Him. If you don't need me, great. And then he, he just wanted to keep saying that. He kept saying, do you understand what I mean? I said, I heard you the first time. So if you don't need me to pray for you. Why are you standing here? He said, that's a good question. <laughs> then he had to humble himself and say, would you, would you pray for me? Of course I pray for you. He was fighting a battle on the inside. Don't let that ugly pride hold you back. 
Don't miss what God has for you because you're so into maybe yesterday or you're into what you were told a long time ago. Or maybe you're just so much into yourself. God's waiting for you tonight. He's waiting to get you into his hands like soft clay. Then he can shape what he wants you to be, what he wants you to do. In this hour, he's changing so many things about so many people. Be part of that. There's a revolution about to begin in America, a complete revolution. Not the one John Lennon wanted. I'm talking about a revolution of a Holy Ghost kind. Not a revival. I said a revolution. And they're both going to work together. And we need people like you. You're needed. You're absolutely needed. Let him touch you tonight. Come, Holy Spirit, I need thee. And come, come Holy sweet Spirit, I, I pray. Come on, every hand up. Come in thy strength. Can come in thy strength, strength and thy, thy power. Come in your own special way. Oh, come on, everybody. Come. Every part, every door of my heart was open. Wow. And I'm so thankful. Uh, but he did more than that. And so he could do it suddenly for you. I mean, I was just sitting up there. I, out of all those people, I was just one of them. A suddenly. Yes. A suddenly. A suddenly. I call for that suddenly for you this night. Hey.
happening with you? Quick, your testimony. Um, last night, my son came up with our family, and um, we got prayed over his teeth. And his his teeth, teeth? Yeah. Today, we saw a big difference. They, he wasn't chewing on his clothes as much. And last night, my husband had an encounter way up there, um, and he saw his whole family in Oakland um, coming to the Lord. And we've been interceding for them, and we've been, been interceding for my husband to have an encounter with the Lord. So when you say he had an encounter up he there? He had an encounter up there during worship last night. He said that he actually came to the throne of God, and he said that he saw his family, and God was going to cover them all with the blood of Jesus. Which is really powerful because last week we were in Oakland, and it's a dark place. It's beautiful. Oakland, California. California. It's beautiful, but God showed me the spiritual realm of Oakland. Yeah, yeah. And it's, they go through a lot growing up there. So yeah. For for God to reveal that to him, it's been on his heart. It was a it was a, a blessing, a miracle. And then when we came down here, God answered our desires to be slayed in the spirit. And we all laid down. <laughs> and I've been wanting that. I know it sounds crazy, but I've been seeing it on TV. I'm like, I want to go like that Holy Spirit. Like I've had encounters with the Holy Spirit, but I've never been laid out. And I'm like, laid that out. was so cool. Like last night, I was like, Woo, I didn't expect it. In fact, I didn't even expect to come up here. But you said something about Ezekiel, and everybody was calling my son Israel, Ezekiel, this week. And I said, okay, you can be Ezekiel. God's prophesying over you. <laughs> He's strengthening us. And I received that word. And then you spoke Ezekiel, and you said, God's strengthening. And I said, I got to go get my son, because it was the Lord telling me, go get him. And we all came down here, and he just laid us out. The Holy Spirit moved so beautifully. So She got laid out last night. I got night. laid out. <laughs> The fire of the Holy Ghost on them. Come on, somebody. Oh. Come on, give God a big shout. Come on. You know, there's nothing like, and I know you know this, Paul, there's nothing like presence, his presence. There's nothing like it. It's and please don't, you have it here. It's in this building it's so scary because when we even leave it's still here this place don't even need greeters at the door you walk in it greets you what if it gets worse I mean what if it gets stronger you know couple things I want to say. I'm going to talk to this girl right here, and I guess this is your son, right? Okay. I'm going to do, I don't, they just came up here pretty quickly. I want you to think about your offering tonight. I'm not going to say much about it. I don't want to have to give you a lot of detail. It shouldn't matter all that I'm doing. I could give you, an, I could give you a litany of reasons why you could help us do what we're doing. But if that's why you give, you're missing the point. What you're feeling tonight, what you're seeing, presence, anointing, people being changed. You can't see that. That don't show up on an x-ray. None of this shows up on a blood test. It's just the presence that will change you, thrill you, and heal you, turn your life around. It'll give you enough to go out of here tonight and, you know, get it now. I was so young when it happened to me, that, but I didn't understand it. And I would, I would be, I mean, I, hate, I, hate, I don't want to use the word ruin, but I was out of commission from being in a Catherine Kuhlman meeting. I'd be out of commission for days. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. I said to my grandmother, I called her ma'am. I said, ma'am, what is this? She'd just laugh. I said, well, I can't, what is I don't want to go play baseball. I don't want to do anything. I just... What is this? I just like I was bumping around like I was a pinball. And then when she'd say, well, that's the Holy Spirit, I think, what? I didn't understand it. God's here to knock you out of your flow and put you into his flow. Revival just isn't good meetings. It's breaking up what you're doing so he can get you moving in a better direction. It could be healing or it could be just getting you redirected. But let this presence just, you know, get, assure you that you are spiritually alive. 
that your faith is alive. And the days ahead can be different than the days behind you. Come on, put your hands up and say, Dear Jesus, thank you for redeeming me, for giving me more time to outlive my yesterday. I don't need an oldie but goodie. I got something brand new. I got resurrection power. It's alive on the inside of me. I'm in a brand new season with fresh oil. I thank you tonight. I didn't survive. I've overcome. Come on, somebody give God a big, big shout. Yes. What happened here? You mentioned the blood. The what? You mentioned leukemia. Leukemia. I, I do not have leukemia, but uh, something related to that. I had um, a chiropractic accident um, the third week of January. Uh -huh that led to numbness and a loss of mobility of my legs. Uh -huh. When I went to the ER, they did MRI. Mm -hmm. They found a fractured T1 and a mass near my spinal cord, which uh, they immediately sent me for emergency surgery the next mm -hmm. morning. Mm -hmm. They removed the mass, and um, the same week they did, the, they removed the T1. Uh, they said there was severe spinal compression. And they send the, the mass for what do you call biopsy. That? Correct. And uh, they said it was cancerous. Um, they send me for rehab to help me regain mobility. Um, they were all surprised at the progress that I was making with the movement. Um, they, their diagnosis went from Plessy, um, you know, an isolated cancer, blood-related cancer. Blood-related. Uh, See, when I said leukemia, I didn't say, I said leukemia is something like leukemia is what I said. So I didn't so, hear it clearly. Um, from an isolated event, they said that they saw three spots, which then they moved their diagnosis to multiple yes. myeloma. Yes, multiple myeloma, right. that's in the bones. That's, can't, that's, yeah, that's yeah. right up the, yeah, so, yeah. So um, they are supposed to schedule me for radiation. You're scheduled tonight. Yeah, I know. You're scheduled I know tonight. That. Come on, somebody, help this girl. Schedule tonight. Somebody say you're scheduled tonight. Thank you for coming up. Thank you for answering. You could have just sit back there and whatever. And who's, this is your son? This is my son. This is her son. And? Nothing much. I'm just with her, pretty much. So. He's a handsome young boy. Yes, he's a How old are you? 16. 16. Yeah. What do you want to do when you grow up? Um, I'm still figuring that out. Good so. for you. Good yeah. for you. Don't hurry at that. Don't hurry at that. God to make himself real to him. He's been hungering for a touch of God. Yeah. So through the past year, he's grown in his uh, hunger for reading psychological books and all that. So he tends to filter everything through logic right now. And he just needs a touch of God. Mama, we're going to get to him. He looks pretty handsome and healthy right now, though. Uh -huh. We're going to get to you tonight because this is no accident. When that word came the first time, I pushed it out. So I thought, hmm, here tonight, leukemia, hmm, I pushed it out. It came in the second time, hmm, hmm, pushed it out. The third time I spoke it because it wasn't completely, it was like leukemia-like. I don't know the name of every disease. I don't study diseases. I study Holy Ghost. But this, this, this no doubt in my mind, what you've just described, that it's you. And keep telling me my dad died of blood cancer, but that's not going to happen Aww. to me. I'll tell you what, I, I don't know. This is amazing. Yes. 901 and God's still working. Wow. Come on, work. You're not going to need this. You're not going to need this. Put your hands up. What's your name? 
Deborah. Put your hands up, Deborah. What's your name? Tristan. Put your hands up too, Tristan. There you go. Put your hands up, Tristan. Get with the program. Get with the program. <laughs> You they, what? They removed us. My T1. The T1, they and removed they that. Put the hardware they put the hardware. They put what? Hardware? Hardware, yeah. They put metal rods. And metal the, rods where? Um, from T1 to C4. Where are you hurting right now? I have no pain. No pain. No pain. I have um, a numbness from my chest down to my toes. But I have function. I can drive. <laughs> I'm driving. I'm lady, walking. lady, you're gonna float home. Yeah. Amazing. Every hand up all over the place. As I pray for her, I want you to receive. I want you to receive tonight. There's way more receiving here than's up front here. This is wall to wall, Holy Spirit tonight. Your legs, your eyes, your ears, your taste buds your breathing, your sleep, your urination. I mean, tonight, really dive into this. There's no reason for you to just sit and watch. Get out of being a spectator. Come on, get out of the grandstands. Get into the game tonight. Get into this journey of a healing Jesus. It's amazing, it's wonderful. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Get past a bad experience. Get past what somebody told you. And get out of thinking you don't deserve it. None of us do. He don't heal us because we're good. He heals us because he's so good. He's so good. We have no righteousness of our own. We got saved and we got his righteousness. We are the righteousness of God in Jesus. We are. I thank you, Lord, for the mother. I thank you for the son. I thank you for the healing of this blood. I thank you for this blood curse being broken over the whole family. It will not travel to the children, to the grandchildren. This thing ends here tonight. It ends here tonight. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Give him a shout. His name is Jesus. Yes, let's pick her up. Let's pick her up. Let's pick her up. She's, is she okay? To, is she, I don't want to disturb her if she's out. Let's pick her up. Wow. 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 into your bones into your blood he cleanses you tonight he cleanses you completely and he dissolves rods he dissolves hardware you're going to be an amazing miracle testimony do you hear me somebody give God a big big shout come on Yes. I, well, I have multiple. Well, I do not have it. Um, I have been diagnosed with multiple myeloma, but it's bone cancer. But it started out with stage four kidney failure. Okay. And then when they finally figured out that I had that, then um, they said that they think the kidney failures from the, the cancer cells, things like that. Yeah. But the medicine, I was on chemo, and now it's a pain my sight I'm having to go to specialists for my sight and my hearing and but I know those are maybe facts for them but when whenever the doctor told me I had cancer I laughed at him and I said I will yeah. not die yeah I'm not gonna die yeah I know yeah. that God has me and I know he has yeah. something for me right. I know the times we're living in right and God has good things ahead of us all of that sounds really good and it's good for her to say that but nothing beats nothing beats I receive when you go vertical person to person spirit to spirit 
you remove it from everybody else. It means you believe in your vertical connection. So many people, they live horizontal Christian lives. They don't ever talk to Him. They never spend that much time with the one that really lives in you and saved you. I get it. I'm just going to put that in the category of progressive, and I won't get into that tonight. But when you're having a need, people can only help you so far. Only so far. I mean, when I was healed of cancer on that Friday morning, 1962, in the Catherine Coleman meeting, you know what Catherine said to me? She said, don't you dare say my name. Because Catherine Coleman did not do this for you. And I was just so struck by that. She said, this was the work of the Holy Spirit. Honor him and he will honor you. So you want to get close to God. It's more than just all of the things out here that we do. It's, it's honoring Him, acknowledging Him. He said, you acknowledge me and, and, and I will guide you in all your ways. He'll show up with wisdom. He'll show up with the person. He'll show up with everything that you need along life's way. He'll remove all the guesswork. There will be no more guesswork. Where's that going to come from? And where's this coming from? He'll get it to you. If he has to drop it by birds with meat, he'll drop it to you. If you have to be the only one in your neighborhood that has honeydew manna on your front yard, come on, somebody. You've got you to shift over here into another dimension to believe that God's well able. But I want you to receive. What you know, I know you know. I know you believe, but I want you to receive. Because I see a lot of people who know who don't make it. You gotta, you gotta take what you know and convert it to I, I receive it. I know carrots are good for me, but sometimes I don't receive it. Come on, somebody. Come on. I go to the produce, I see broccoli, that's good, but I don't receive it tonight. Come on, somebody. I want me some strawberries and whipped cream tonight. Come on, say, I know that's good for me. You know what I'm about to say. You don't want to cooperate. Come on, say, I know that's good for me but I don't receive it tonight. I want some French toast. I receive that syrup and that butter. Oh my God. See what you know and what you receive. And you get into thinking because I know something you've received it, not at all. God's bringing you information every day to the people, strangers, commercials. He's trying to get into you and say, get healed before it comes to a bigger thing. Get ahead of this. Get ahead of this. Mm. A bear is a different bear if it's outside the cabin than inside the cabin. Once that bear gets inside your cabin, it's a different bear. Keep it on the outside of your cabin. Amazing. Just amazing. Come on, say, I receive. Holy Spirit, I receive into my body, into every cell, your Holy Spirit, the healing stripes. One stripe from Jesus, one drop of blood from Calvary by the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Somebody give God a shout. Come on. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. That's what's called a delayed fall right there. It's a delayed fall. Come on, give God a big, big.